Well, welcome back to our Midlands Matters Cavendish Talks podcast. I'm Johnny Hodges, Senior Account Manager at Birmingham. And I'm Martha Jennings, a Senior Account Manager in our Birmingham team. And we're so grateful to Nicole and Dwenny from Invest in Nottingham to joining us today. So, Nicole, tell us a bit about you, your role in Invest in Nottingham and kind of what it is that you get up to on a daily basis. Well, there is a lot I could start with, but I guess <laughs> a bit about me. My name's Nicole, as you've said. I'm a Business Expansion Specialist at Invest in Nottingham. We're part of Marketing Nottingham, which is the place marketing organisation for Nottingham and Nottinghamshire. They're different departments and essentially we market the city and everything it has to offer from the invest point of view to businesses and investors, attracting them into the city from a visit Nottingham and Nottinghamshire point of view to visitors and people living within the city, just getting them to enjoy what we have to offer. Mm -hmm. We also have Meet in Nottingham, just encouraging people to come and have their conferences in Nottingham, have their meetings there. We help facilitate that and organize the spaces for them. And then we also have Nottingham Partners, which is our business network, essentially getting people around the table, promoting what's great about the city but also sharing best, best practice as businesses. Mm -hmm. And so how did your early career experiences lead you to work for Invest in Nottingham then because it sounds like something really interesting to be part of but have you lived in Nottingham for a large portion of your life? So I was born in Zimbabwe. I moved to Hucknall, which is Nottinghamshire, at the age of 13. I'm 34 now. I know it shows. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> from Africa to England and from a small town called Karoi to Nottingham, mm -hmm. essentially. So I guess, you know, it was my first home in England. I um, was really happy to move. Well, I say happy, scared to move here, yeah. Yeah, but really enjoyed living in the place and kind of growing. I guess what led to working for Invest in Nottingham and Marketing Nottingham? I would say a couple of things. I had worked for the Women's Centre, helping women with complex needs and in crisis. I had also worked uh, for Boots. So I'd worked for Ento, which is a marketing agency doing experiential marketing for Boots, but then kind of running, working on that account and making sure that we brought brands to life within Boots stores. So there was kind of marketing, marketing brands, mm -hmm. which was great. You know, who doesn't love, you know, a bit of lipstick, <laughs> Chanel and all the yeah. good stuff that we got to market within, <laughs> within, <bit> jazzing up. <laughs> <laughs> within the Boots store, all the different uh -huh. products. But then I was also passionate about people and mm -hmm. helping people. So a background of kind of working in the third sector, but then again, working in business. Mm -hmm. So it, it brought those things together. So working for Invest was all about marketing the city, mm -hmm. marketing what it has to offer, but then also helping people, helping businesses with the aid that they need to expand. And often those services are quite expensive and quite dear. So you've got SMEs at different levels, mm -hmm. and it's just making sure that their growth process is really easy. We want to retain businesses. We want them to grow in the city and the easier we make it for them the easier it is for them to stay so that, I think that's what kind of led to that that passion for business that passion for helping but also that passion to market mm -hmm. something a product or place mm -hmm. that's great thank you and and what would you say your favorite part of that is for you like are you particularly drawn to any element of, of the role particularly um, or, or do you just love it all like what, what um, is it Admin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about yeah, everyone like else. That, but... Admin is hard. Like sometimes I really enjoy the meeting new people. That's mm -hmm. the honest truth. I love meeting new people. I love understanding the problems that businesses are solving because that's what business is. It's solving a problem and then, you know, t taking it to the world. So there's some really interesting businesses we've come across in our time. Yeah, some, <laughs> some really interesting ones. So I really have enjoyed that element, meeting new people. And because it's all the sectors, it's not just one particular thing. It's like there's no day that's the same. It could be that you're talking to a tech business. It could be that you're talking to retail, the restaurant. So every day is very different, but definitely meeting new people is my favorite. And how does the built environment play into that? Because you've spoken about you bring people into the city, you encourage investment in, obviously a vast variety of businesses, and I'm sure that those businesses will need very different spaces. So what's sort of the interaction between your role and what Nottingham has to offer from a built environment perspective, and Nottinghamshire, of course? So I would say it's 
look at it with two different sets of eyes, I guess. So there's the led by the city itself. There is a lot of the different needs that the city has. So when a business comes in and when you're looking at the built environment, it's like, do we need more student accommodation? Let's answer that that problem. Do we need more built around properties? Let's answer that. So looking at what the city and the place needs and how that, that takes shape. And then there's also the fact that we get approached by businesses to come into the city, right? Because we're trying to attract them all the time. So then there's the, we're looking to open a new office. Can you help us find that? Then there's kind of, well, what do we have that could bring them in? So looking at what we have, and to be honest, there's the part where you answer those problems for businesses and you can facilitate that move and you can secure them a space or land within the city and sometimes it's not available. You know, things are coming on, you know, things are becoming available very quickly and then being snapped up really quickly. So sometimes we get clients and we'd love to have them here, but sometimes we, we can't meet their requirements. And you know, that's always like a lot, an ongoing process. You know, it could be that I speak to a client in January, but then something comes up for them in September or in fact the following January and they're still looking. So those the, those sweet moments and the sweet mm -hmm. spots within your job where you can still meet it even though it wasn't when they asked. Mm -hmm. But then there's the difficult times where it's just like actually we don't have what you need. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's the reality of any place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And are there like any sectors like specifically which are I guess more drawn to Nottingham? Like do you come across like quite similar um, businesses coming in or is it is it really quite vast? I would say it's really quite vast, especially with us being almost like, I feel people see us as that first point of call. Yeah. So we kind of refer out, mm -hmm. it could be a startup business, we refer out to those services. It could be that we can help them because they're established and actually what they're looking for, we can facilitate that expansion. And it could be that actually, it might just sit right outside of our remit. So I guess when we're looking at the different types, like I say, it is genuinely very, very varied, you know, professional services tech, uh, all sorts, like I say, restaurants that we've helped expand. Um, it could be anything and everything, if I'm honest, which is the part that I said mm -hmm. I really enjoy. So, yeah. Ticking the boxes. <laughs> <laughs> and so you mentioned there a whole range of different buildings, sorry, different organisations, all of which need, as we've also said, you know, different spaces, which you've mentioned you can sometimes find and sometimes not. So zooming out a bit, how do you think Nottingham's current built environment offering place to both its strengths as a city, a city within the UK, mm -hmm. and both its weaknesses in terms of what you feel like Nottingham really needs to improve on in order to, you know, raise its reputation across the UK? I think what we definitely need is kind of what's on the horizon. So we've got the devolution deal happening in the East Midlands for Derby, Derbyshire, Nottingham, Nottinghamshire. So that'll be more investment in skills and infrastructure and investment across the board that we so desperately need as a region that's been quite underinvested mm -hmm. in for quite some time. So the reality is there are some other things that are, are core to our development as a city and as a region that also need that public sector investment. So when we see things like leveling up, there are certain projects that we would have wished we'd got some leveling up funds for and there's certain projects that we also did get some leveling up funds for so you know it's 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 working together to make sure that that strategy comes together properly so if you've got the businesses you've, you've got the local plans that the councils will, will 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 put together then you've got the ambitions of businesses and investors and then you've got what is really needed in the city to actually lift that up so when we say what does that look like, I mean, I think the strengths of the city are its diversity, where it's situated, you know, a large proportion of the country is within a four hour drive of Nottingham City. So there are so many things that make it easier for people to do business, the way we have connectivity to East Midlands Airport, the largest cargo airport in the country. Again, all of these different things make us a great destination. It's a fantastic, I mean, I'm saying that, I'm not, I know I'm paid to say this, but I also <laughs> really believe it. It's not just a fantastic place to, you know, live, eat, invest, work and study, but you know, people come, we see it, we can see it with the growth, we can see it with the development. And we've, we're a city like all cities that has its challenges, but what I love about people in Nottingham and the businesses in Nottingham is we know how to work together and we know how to collaborate. So when we look at that built environment, 
there is that answering a need, like I said at the beginning. Um, there is that when businesses come in, we're trying to figure out how we can facilitate that growth and keep them there or you know, make sure we find a base for them. And then there is kind of like that strategic plan that set out how we get the investment in to make that even more attractive and just how we shout about what's good because there are a lot of great things about the city and the county. Mm -hmm. oh, that's great, thank you. And you know, in, in your spare time, although it doesn't sound like you have much of it, um, we're aware that you're part of the um, Labour Party and that you're actually about to stand for a new role um, as the Derbyshire Police and Crime Commissioner. Tell us a little yeah. bit about, um, yeah, your role in the Labour Party and where you see see that kind of kind of going. But you're right. What is free time? <laughs> I really have none. Um, so, yeah, I am in the Labour Party um, and I guess I got involved because, I mean, like I mentioned earlier, I was born in Zimbabwe and left Zimbabwe when I was 13. So if you know a bit about the history of, of Zimbabwe and the politics, it, you know, you can't not be turned on to the impact that politics has on people's lives. Part of the reasons we moved was because of the economic challenges, the political challenges. And so the reality of politics is just really tangible mm -hmm. because you actually see how decisions impact lives and how they impacted yours and in this case mine. So when I moved to England at a very tender age, I mean, I didn't join the Labour Party then because it's not possible. <laughs> but, you know, as I navigated life and kind of tried to find my political home. The Labour Party's values really aligned with mine. And so that's how I got involved. I then got elected as a councillor. I had the por portfolio for community safety and engagement. So around the policing budgets, PCSO budgets, and making sure that the area that I lived in was as safe as it could possibly be and that we were meeting the needs of the residents, which is what we were elected to do. You know, fast forward now, I'm older and hopefully wiser and uh, running for police and crime commission. My degree is in criminology and international relations. So, you know, just passionate about understanding why people commit crime, the causes of crime, and looking at crime, not just as kind of, once you've committed the crime, this is the result of that, and also keeping people safe, but also understanding what drives people to make those decisions in the first place. Mm -hmm. How can we avoid that? How can we support people? And so understanding crime holistically, but making sure that, again, the residents that you're elected to represent, their priorities are heard. Often, sometimes people feel that, you know, you're answering problems, but they're not their problems. So listening is really important, making sure that you understand that. And so I'm, I'm passionate because I live in Derby now, and it's where I call home, and I want to see Derby thrive and Derbyshire thrive as well. And my passions for wanting to see places do well, you know, it's what I do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, being that I live there now, I just wanted to extend my passion for service and make sure that, you know, we bring new ideas, fresh ways of looking at things. And, you know, if we're going to complain about how things are done, we have to have the courage to step up and, and say, right, well, put yourself forward and, and what do you bring to the table to do things differently? So hopefully we'll see what happens. The election is on the 2nd of May next year. So lots of campaigning, no sleep. Um, and yeah, it, it's it's something I'm excited to do and I'm really glad as well that I've had the support of my colleagues and, and yeah, it's, it's been an adventure already. Mm. Well, we wish you all the very best <laughs> of that. And sounds like a really, obviously, you know, a really interesting point, I think, the idea of service and how you are looking to serve your, the, the place that you now live in a different way and obviously with that, that role that you also have with Invest in Nottingham, it's really clear to see how you're very vested yeah. um, in, in improving the lives of people that live in Nottingham um, and Derbyshire and surrounding areas. Something that I think is probably relevant to ask about here is that what do you think about, this is about Nottingham City Council, mm -hmm. and what do you think about the potential impact of their, you know, there might, there's rumours surrounding them about financial problems, about bankruptcy. How do you think that bankruptcy and financial issues impact the ability of residents to, you know, have full services accessed, etc. Like, what do you think about the financial situation that's that's rumoured to be surrounding a Notty City Council? I think, you know, at the end of the day, we've seen this happen across the country. I mm -hmm. think Nottingham City isn't the first council to have these challenges. So we Certainly know not. that, and it probably won't be the last because yeah. of the financial constraints and, and troubles and challenges that councils across the board are facing. You know, they have had their funding cuts over the years, just literally 
cut and cut and cut. Mm -hmm. And so something does have to give. Um, and I do think that it's, it's just been a challenge. And how do we navigate that? We're going to have to work together. There's nothing else that we can do in times of, of trouble, in times of challenge. One thing that I love about the city is its resilience. You know, the city always comes together. Businesses come together. They, they look at a problem and they want to sit around a table. They want to look at what the strategy is. Then they want to say, well, how do we fix this? Look, people live there. They've invested there. They've got their businesses there. So they care. They care about the positive outcome. So we're all in, in that boat thinking, right, you know, we don't, we're not close to the detail. I think most of that detail will we would find out from the council. And like you say, it's rumored and then all the details are, are yet to be fleshed out and better understood. So to say, what is the impact? I don't think anyone's very clear what that impact is as, they, as the details come to the fore. But what I can say is that there are still a group of people in the city wanting it to grow, wanting it to thrive, keen to work together, to face whatever challenges we're met with because we want the best for the city. You know, a lot of people not, don't just only call it home. You know, it's, it's where they make their livelihoods for their families. So there's a lot at stake for them. So working together uh, is just really important for us. And I just see that as the best way forward. As more details become available to us, we will, I guess, face it head on mm -hmm. as, it, as it unfolds. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's that, that age old saying, isn't it? Of like, you can either be part of the problem or you can be part of the solution. And yeah. I guess all of the work that you're gearing up towards, both in your, your job, but also in, in, in the acts of service that we see through the Labour Party and then the um, Police and Crime Commission, is, is gearing towards helping people understand, like, you need to be part of the, the solution here uh, yeah. to making this work. Forever. And I think with both, you know, it's problem solving. That's like literally, I think if there's anything that keeps me up at night mm -hmm. is like, how do I make this, like, how do we make it better? Mm -hmm. Because there is just literally, it's wasted energy complaining about it because nothing changes when we complain about it. But when we start to say, okay, right, I'm frustrated about this. And, but how do we navigate the solution? How do we get to the other side? And I think that's what we see time and time again through life. You know, look at the different things we've had to navigate, like COVID. Look at the getting to the other side is usually, you know, the key and the goal. And I think that's going to be really important, whether it's political across the board, whether it's my election or the general elections coming up. There's just a lot of challenges in the world, right? So mm -hmm. people are looking for answers. And it's we're then tasked to provide those answers. And I, I think it's an important role, whether it's at Investor Nottingham, when someone is, you know, they're looking at their business and they're going, Nicole, can you help me? I really need, can you point me in the right direction of, you know, financial support or, you know, I really need a building. I, I'm struggling, you know, helping people every step of the way is just something that's really close to my heart and extremely important. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I guess a, a question, um, for you to kind of almost wrap up our time together is what do you see some of the biggest challenges facing the East Midlands region as a whole both I guess to services in terms of your role politically but also in terms of invest in Nottingham? I think it's what I touched on a bit earlier that underinvestment. Um, I don't think people realize just how far back it takes us when you see other areas and how that investment takes them forward. I think feeling left behind is something that we, we felt as a region. But I guess we, again, positively looking forward, looking at that devolution deal, looking at that investment coming in. Now, that won't be the only answer. There'll be other things that we will need to do as a region to continue to elevate ourselves. But it's a start. Being able to have finances coming into the region that we can leverage to get more finance. And we've seen that in Manchester. We've seen that with other combined authorities where they've been able to leverage the deals that they have to get and attract more investment. So I think that's... That's the biggest challenge, I think, seeing how we embed everything into where we are, because it's a new thing for us. The command authority is new. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we'll, it'll be a close one to watch because we're also very lucky in that we're not the first to do it. So, you know, we can learn best practice from other areas, avoid some hiccups from other areas as well. So I think we're in a good position, but, you know, it, it has been a definite challenge for the region. So hopefully things are, are looking up. Thank you so much for um, your time today, Nicole. It's been really great to talk to you. And it's been really interesting to see how the thread that seems to run throughout your approach to, well, I suppose all the roles you've had in your life, but also 
you know, an approach that I suppose everybody can take is that we accept there are problems, we accept there are difficult times ahead, but we've got to work towards solutions with energy. And I think that that's going to be particularly interesting when we look at what's, what's happening with this devolution deal. Um, and of course, on a personal level, we look at what will happen on those local elections um, for the police and crime commissioners. So we wish you all the best with that. Um, and thank you so much for watching another episode of Cavendish Talks. Uh, really appreciate you spending the time with us today and we'll catch you on the next episode.